in practice. Um, anybody here play sports in high school? Stephen, what would you play? Uh, basketball, baseball, football. Okay. So you played football on Friday nights, right? Okay. 10, 10 11 games a season? Uh, 10. 10 games a season. Games take game takes two hours to play. For every Friday night you played, how much time did you spend on the practice field? Every day but Friday. Five times. <laughs> Think about that. You know, I've had lots of uh, former professional athletes in my seminars over the years, and uh, they've convinced me it was about forty to one for every hour they played on Friday night or Saturday afternoon or Sunday. They spent 40 hours that week practicing their profession. And if you think about it, no profession should be more conducive to practice than ours because there is no second place money in our profession. If someone shows up here, Patrick, and you do not help them buy a car that day, they're going to go somewhere else, okay? Let's say, and by the way, not everybody buys their first time in. I understand that. Probably it's going to happen more so here because of the way you market your vehicles. But somebody may not buy the first time in, but if they don't buy the first time in, Patrick, you're going to follow them up, okay? Let's say that customer comes over to my store. I don't, they don't buy from me the first time in either, so I'm going to follow them up as well. So on that third day, I get them on the phone and they say, Steve, you were great. Loved your vehicle, loved your store. Next time we're in the market for a vehicle, we'll give you a shot because we bought a car from Patrick over at Harvard. It was a photo finish. You lost by a nose. What's my reward for losing by a nose? Not a Zero. Patrick doesn't even send me a bird dog. Doesn't send me a finder's fee. He gets all the glory, all the money. I get nothing. I get heartache. So there is no second place in this business. You either win or you lose. And if you're in a position where you win or you lose, I would think you should practice your profession. But it's not part of our culture as a rule. Again, better here than most places. You, I, hope you get, I hope you get used to role playing with each other. We're going to role play today and tomorrow. It's not all that much fun because I'm going to have a camera sticking in your face. It's intense, scary, but you'll be better for it because <clears throat> if we make a mistake in here, what's it cost us? Nada. Make a mistake out there, cost us a deal. Okay? Understand how to communicate the value of your store's value proposition in quantifiable terms, then do so with every customer. What's the value proposition here? What is a value proposition? It's everything that a business does over and above the product itself. The product is cars and trucks here, new and used. Those are your products. What's the value? What's the Harbin value proposition? Wash base, service. Say again? Wash bay, service, quick lane. Okay, but I can find that anywhere. What's the Harbin value proposition? Uh, Harbin value proposition. You're, you're, you're part of it, Stephen. You're part of it. Make no mistake about that. Say again? The Harbin value price. The Harbin value price. Why, why, why are 300 plus people showing up here every single month? Because of your location? Because we have the lowest price. Because you have chosen to price your vehicles in a, in a, in a most value-laden way. You know, I, I, don't use the word, I don't use the term cheap because it ain't cheap. But you've, you price your vehicles to attract people from of hundreds of miles away. I sold a guy in Michigan not too long ago. Seriously? I sold one from Ohio. Really? For a Dodge Caravan. That guy bought a 2014 Ford Flex. Come all the way from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. I didn't think you could get here from Cleveland. <laughs> we had a guy just got off the plane from Japan.